Welcome to this episode of YouTube entitled Thanks for Your Incredible Generosity and we do apologize for the delay. We did finish up with an anthology class and had a great week of discussion of interactions with the wolves, of observations, field activity, and really good social dynamics from humans and wolves alike. And so we we always use that ethology class to help us better understand the wolves. In addition to that, a lot of great photographic opportunities for people. Uh, we have also started the photographic sessions, so every Saturday morning at 6.30 a.m. and every Thursday night, unless there's a wolf watch, there's a photographic session um, here until August. So if you want to check the program schedule, but those are great opportunities for us to observe the wolves and to look at the dynamics. And so our job is not just about the physical, it's about the psychological. How's the pack interacting? And that's the bonus of having the ethology students, uh, observers, photographers, etc., watching the dynamics that's going on between the individual wolves and trying to determine again that the pack is psychologically healthy as well as physically healthy. So we certainly are grateful to the donors who have helped uh, our wolves become physically happy. Um, to For the people who donate through Amazon wish list with the medications and vitamins and things for the wolves, as well as wood chips. Uh, we are in the bug season, so cedar chips are a bonus for the wolves. And you'll see, even though cedar it makes them sneeze a little bit. Uh, we do mix it with pine um, to reduce a little bit of that strong odor, but the cedar does help to keep some of the bugs down as we enter the bug season. We are also most grateful for the Crowdwise Wolf Wagon phone, uh, Fund, and this is our new carcass trailer. That's uh, Steve Hogum, who uh, actually brought the carcass trailer over from Fargo for us, and my dog Tina and Cameron Feaster, the wolf specialist at the center, and I, and we are already put the carcass trailer to good use and so the wolves are are certainly enjoying that benefit of having again a fresh roadkill available to them and sometimes not so fresh roadkill available to them um, as their main diet as well as a beaver the other thing that we did this week is we did take some weights and so uh, in addition to get the pond pump up and running this clip is actually filmed from inside so we turned the audio off here but gives me a chance to give you some body weights. Uh, weighing in as the largest wolf on the exhibit is Aiden at 136.25 pounds. Denali was 134.5 and Bolts, who was here in the pond, at 111.9. Luna went in at 91.7 pounds, which is, is, is right on task with Maya. With Maya, we had a four-year-old weight where Maya was 90 four pounds but um saluna's doing extremely well and uh shadow weighed in at 87.3 which is a little bit lower than his 90 pound weight but certainly doing good and grizzer weighed in at 123 pounds so we've cleaned the pond to make sure again get rid of the algae issue that's something that is an ongoing thing for us in the summer is to make sure that the pond is is clean we do some algae treatments but it's easier for us just to wash it pressure wash it, drain it, refill it um, on a regular basis so that because they do drink out of it and they do swim in it, that they have some clean water. So Luna, again, thank you for the, the uh, wood chips. We are using the wood chips adjacent to the building. That helps us, first of all, manage the bug population a little bit, but it is a place where the wolves like to lay when it rains. The eaves of the building puts them right next to the windows, observation windows, and when it's raining, the bugs kind of congregate a little bit underneath that eaves out of the rain, and so having those chips helps keep the vegetation down. Uh, the cedar oils give them a little bit of covering, and uh, we also do some fly spray with them, but um, it's a comfortable place for them to rest, and it's certainly a place for them to get away from, from some bugs. So Luna likes it. All four of them fit there. If uh, you were on a Working for Wolves program a few years ago, you'll remember when we moved those rocks so we could accommodate all four wolves. Over in Grizzer's area, he loves them as well. Um, Grizzer actually just went a, did a dive in. We put his in his kind of over, uh, there's a kennel area with a roof for Grizzer to get out of the rain. He also has a den. Grizzer's got several places for him to go, but uh, he rolled in it, he scattered it around, and then he proceeded to fall asleep in the chip. So uh, he was quite relaxed. And so this is a, another area where 
he gets out of the rain. So sometimes when it's really rainy and it can get really buggy under the eaves, it was a, it's a good place to saturate that with cedar chips. And he, he again, as obviously um, you could tell, uh, rolling in it and covering himself up with chips and then also, uh, like I said, falling asleep with it. So um, Grizzer is not quite finished shedding. He's got his mid-body is shed out. His neck is not shed. Um, so we're working on that. Uh, every wolf seems to shed in a different pattern. And uh, Grizzer is unique in that he sheds his mid-body first. And then his tail is kind of... The, the neck and tail kind of last us to go. Matter of fact, his tail is getting a little bit uh, shed out, really and he's got a kind of a rat tail look to him. Grizzard's tail, I don't know, for whatever reason, it just gets down to a bare tail with a little bit of guard hair on it, and then um, we'll grow back and get real bushy again. Also, somebody had asked about treatments. We don't have fleas or, or issues, or lice issues here, but um, this far north, but we have a uh, do have ticks, and so we do tend to uh, pick ticks off of the wolves and do a, a daily inspection. We do not use um, much for tick inspection unless we start seeing a real issue with it. Our tick treatments because they tend to uh, bite and grab each other in the neck a lot, so we're a little bit hidden, hesitant to put a tick treatment um, on wolves that are constantly mouthing each other. So, so over in retirement, um, Shadow, bothered by the mosquitoes as well, but you can see here it's been scent rolling quite a bit, scent rolls in the uh, chips as well as in the new grass. He's doing a little bit of whining there towards Grizzer. We are letting him um, just pretty much whenever Shadow feels like it um, interact at the gate. Uh, Grizzer's gotten used to the routine now, so uh, things are going well. Shadow um, comes out and actually Shadow did an RLU, a race like urination, on Grizzer's wall that uh, there's a wall, a wood wall that is on the back side of retirement that faces uh, faces Grizzer. So we um, saw that we hadn't been seeing Shadow scent marking much since Malik's uh, loss, and so that was kind of interesting. But definitely alert. Boy, he seems to, since uh, we did the trial with Grizzer, he's definitely perked up. He's, you know, certainly there's that transition of, of separation anxiety that he's gone through, but, but this is certainly stimulating him and keeping him uh, alert and active and certainly that's something that we want lots of shedding needs to happen on this wolf here uh, we uh, are trying to brush him he's not a big fan of the brush uh, so we try to hand pluck some of that but he is full of hair and he is the last one he and Denali actually have an equal amount of hair on them and uh, we'll continue to try to stimulate that hair to uh, help cool him but like I said Grizzer and Shadow and the exhibit all have ponds, so that helps cool them as well. So, so that's it for this week's YouTube. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.